Welcome to the Black Knight Nation podcast, your source for the latest information about your Army Black Knights, with your host, Sal Interdonato. Black Knight Nation, what's up? This is the uh, Old Grads podcast. We have uh, Steve Anderson, our co-host, and this is a, a special edition bringing on uh, Josh McNary to the show. And uh, just say, uh, just want to. This is our second edition of the Old Grads, Steve. Right? We want to connect with former Army players just to find out, you know, their time at West Point, and that's football players, and what they're doing now, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, Josh, Josh, welcome. Thanks, guys. Good to be here. Good to see both y'all. It's been a long time. Yeah, it's good. It's good to have uh, Josh, aka J Mac, in the house. Number Quattro Quattro Four Four. Um, you know, our first edition was with uh, <laughs> Jason, aka Gypsy Johnson. Um, nice. <laughs> and then, legend. Uh, yeah, I wanted to get Josh uh, on the net here. Another, another pivotal guy of that 2010 bowl game team, and then uh, you know, just reached out to him. Said he'd be interested in doing it. A little pre-game action before Army takes on WVU in Memphis. So I'll be out early in the morning heading to the game um, to give some uh, some live action at the at the game. And um, just wanted to get Josh on here and see uh, see how he's doing, what he's up to now, um, and uh, kind of get his thoughts uh, for the game. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I guess first we, we've been talking like bowl memories since tomorrow is the bowl game. And, you know, we last week we talked about the 2010 Armed Forces Bowl. And, you know, um, Steve, you always talk about like when Army's playing a key game that, that kind of punch him in the mouth early and, and make, it make it, you know, make an impression, especially on defense. And that's something that you guys certainly did in that 2010 Armed Forces Bowl. And, um, you know, I, we did talk about this last week, Steve, but I, all I can remember is Josh scooping up the ball and running and you kind of providing a little bit of a assistance there into the end zone, you know, running down the field with him. I mean, that's, uh, you know, an escort, so to speak, I guess you could say. Um, Josh, what do you remember about that play? Uh, what, what stands out on that play for you? That was a great one. That one just, that was like a blessing that just fell from the sky and into my hands. Uh, those don't come around too often. And uh, like, I, I don't know, it was, it, was a, it was a great little like gift uh, for the for the end of my career. But uh, yeah, I mean, um, just, you know, it wasn't my most effective game as a pass rusher. But, um, you know, I managed to kind of like get close to the pocket. And, um, you know, that particular one, I don't know if it was Mike Gann or somebody who's, who uh, jutted that ball out of there. But um, you know, uh, lo and behold, it was just like a bobbling at my feet and um, just matter of right place at the right time. And uh, yeah, just, you know, luckily didn't didn't kick the ball when I was trying to scoop. So kind of those, those drills finally paid off. And uh, yeah, just, uh, you know, just just tried my tail off to, to not get uh, caught or walk down from behind and, and kind of make that like the you know, the worst memory of, of my playing career. But uh, sure enough, Steve, with in all this energy and fervor, it was just like zooming by me, like, you know, like somebody in the left in the fast lane or something. Uh, I don't I don't know where you got that, uh, that like, went to his back <laughs> oh, or whatever. But I was, uh, well, um, you know, I think it was Zach Watts, if I remember correctly, um coming off that i think he was playing the whip position at the time oh yeah on the other side yeah yeah and i think he was you know doing in that double eagle flex we had uh kind of the whip man on the back and if the back blocked he kind of got a kind of like a man blitz um was kind of like the the you know the the check um if he didn't go out for a pass so he just blitzed over his back was able to get a get a hand on the ball and yeah josh had a nice little scoop nice little athleticism good thing that wasn't mike gann uh, trying to scoop, he'd be kicking the ball all over the place. Um, but yeah, you know, of course, I had to make it fun. You know, the running back thought he could catch Josh. He oh yeah, no, and he, he definitely would have no, <laughs> cleaned no, that up nice. Boy, would have started field him, but I had to point at him to make it a little more fun, you know, and uh, just kind of give him the old the old right shoulder. That's why you do, you know, <laughs> you do drugs in the off season, baby. So that's why we um, do it. That's right. Uh, but yeah, I, I think just to go back to your original point, Sal, um, it's one of, it's what one, 
Uh, that's why most teams prefer to defer, prefer to defer to the second half to get the ball to start the second half. Um, but it's a lot uh, for us, at least um, as a defense unit and the way our kind of the personality of the team was that year, um, we really liked to set the tone with our defense. It was where most of our guys that have been playing together the longest, I think we had seven out of the 11 starters from prep school on that team, um, at least in that starting 11, starting 12, that, you know, the, this next man up kind of drill. And uh we had, we had a really good chemistry, so we, we fed off of that. The team fed off of the defensive energy of that, that team. Um, and, yeah, we got to punch them right in the face and, and take the ball down and, and score quickly. And then our off – you know, anytime you go up quick um, with the triple option, I mean, you can just grind. Uh, it sets, it sets the, the team and the team philosophy up to, for success. So uh, definitely a, a good way to start the bowl game. And something that, you know, the, man, I was looking at the weather – it's going to be pouring down starting the night. Um, so that, you know, at least uh, throughout history, I mean, that that favors the triple option um, as long as we hold on to the ball. But I'm going to have my two sons, five and four year old out there. They're just going to they're just going to fight through it and watch Army, uh, you know, take it to them. No umbrellas necessary tomorrow, right, Steve? Or no? No, uh, I don't even know if we're allowed umbrellas, but no, you That's wouldn't an umbrella. Definitely not my sons, maybe my wife, but not not the men. Yeah, no, like rain, rain gear or anything like that, or uh, we'll we'll have to put the rain jackets on the kids, you know, just because they'll just get all wet and then they'll probably you know get you know get the sniffles or whatever. I, I'll just be wearing army gear, you know, might go shirtless. I don't know. Hasn't, haven't, uh, haven't come up with, uh, what's actually going to be going on, but might be a big, you know, uh, you know, army a on the chest. I don't know. I'm excited though. Uh, it's going to be my first game this year. I haven't been able to get up to any games. You know, I was, um, I was deployed most of the year this year. So, uh, came back just really spending time with the family. Um, we got to go to Western Kentucky last year. That was a short drive for us. Um, so this is another short drive, you know, just three and a half hours and, uh, you know, it's going to be better to go to a bowl game. No doubt. Uh, maybe, let's talk about how you guys kind of met at prep school and how you guys kind of clicked. It seemed like from, from me, was it from basically the start when you guys first meet at prep school? Um, you know, is that where you guys kind of build that bond and that brotherhood? I'll let Josh, I'll let Josh start. I'd like to hear his, his take on this, uh, uh, as people know, you usually hear me before you see me. So I think getting Josh's uh, point of view on this would be pretty good. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> I was uh, I was in there, you know, just kind of a walk on to the, the prep school team. Um, not really wanting to make any big waves, just trying to, like, get in where I fit in. Um, and uh I think uh, Steve must have been on the complete opposite end of that spectrum as far as uh, kind of, like he mentioned, being the, the voice like early and often and uh, also holding holding himself and the, the teammates up to a, a high standard. So uh, he wasn't hard to find um, or easy to miss. So, um, yeah, I mean, it was just a matter of me um, kind of just trying to uh, – make my way, you know, find my way and then kind of uh, make a place for myself. And, um, you know, I, I was able to kind of uh, just start kind of delivering on uh, on the the effort front first and then um, on the performance front next. And I uh, think, uh, you know, throughout that, that season at the prep school, Steve and I kind of uh, emerged as kind of, uh, you know, a couple – guys with with the potential to to uh you know make an impact um at the actual varsity level and um we kind of bonded you know through like uh on the field kind of potential and uh you know kind of complement each other in, in style and um and and play and then off the field you know dude's just a, a great well-rounded guy who uh you know is very kind of uh you know, diverse in, in thought and charismatic and uh, just just fun to be around. So one of those one of those gyms that, you know, it was, it was nice to have upon arriving at, at a place like 
you know, the, the academy prep school where, you know, you don't know what to expect or, you know, whether, you know, everybody's going to be like, you know, buttoned down, stiff. And uh, you brought like a different element that I could enjoy and the whole team benefited from, that's for sure. Yeah, I, I, the uh, I remember a specific play from prep and I don't look, I don't have the greatest memory in the world. Uh, I'll be the first one to tell you. But uh, I do remember a specific play at prep school. You know, we're trying to, like Josh was saying, oh, one second. I just saw, uh, Josh, I remember you as one of the um, soft spoken guys I've talked to in interviews as a player. You know, you, you, you took a little bit of time to process your thoughts, but a lot of what I, I was able to um, write about you was there was a lot of substance to it. You know, you, you didn't speak so much, so many words, but there was a lot of substance to, to what you were saying. And uh, I think basically you were more of a guy that spoke with your actions on the field than, than anything else, right? It seems like or now. Yeah, that can that can be said, Sal. Uh, um, yeah, I, I guess uh, that's kind of that's kind of where you know I, I ended up kind of like making a, a, a space for myself and just kind of remaining. Um, I uh, I definitely in in the leaders that I see kind of um, take the most from people that lead by example first, and um, you know like if if you talk it, then that's then that's great but um you know i really respect when people can walk it and um that's just kind of where uh where i where i kind of kind of fit in and i thought like the the dynamic that we had as captains eventually if, if we were going to get to that point it was uh it was pretty good and, and complimentary just in, in terms of like um each each of the four members kind of uh serving a, a specific role um and uh, yeah, you definitely had you know the more vocal end of the spectrum and and the, and the less vocal, and, and um, but you know at the end of the day, kind of everybody had to had to show and prove and um, kind of lead by example. So uh, that's just kind of the the road that I took on. Steve, you were talking about maybe a prep school you remember you you remember. Yeah, the, uh, you know, like Josh said, um, you know, it was always, uh, you know, to all of us, it was always a wonder why Josh was a walk-on um, to the academy or really, you know, anywhere. And I know he played a lot of different positions in high school. You know, he, wherever the coach needed him, that's the kind of guy that Josh was. You know, he played linebacker, he played DN, he played, you know, he had to play corner a little bit. Whatever whatever the coach needed in high school, he would do. Um, and it's the same thing he did did for us. I mean, he was a D line, you know, he was a D lineman. Then he played linebacker all of spring ball. And then we had injuries and he got put back on the D line at, at West Point. But I remember one play specifically at, at prep school, um, very early during camp. Um, if you have never met coach Kawika, um, Ben Kawika, he's an absolutely phenomenal guy. He was one of my mentors still. I text him to this day. Um, and, and um, you know, wish him the best of luck. But um, Josh, you know, tr we're trying to figure out where we're going to put this athlete at, right? Uh, where we're going to put Josh at? Is he going to be a linebacker? Is he going to be a nose guard? Is he going to be a, an outside linebacker? Is he going to be a DN? And you know, essentially, Josh became you know the 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 ex athlete of okay, where can only other people play, right? Okay, Steve can only play linebacker. That's the only position he's going to play. Tailback. Right. Well, a little bit of tailback, right? He's just going to run straight with the football or he's going to run straight and tackle the football, right? That's that's what Steve's going to do, you know? Rod, okay, Rod's going to play outside linebacker, okay? D. Trav, he's going to play safety. Um, and then we had, we had a guy named Devin Cox. He's going to play nose tackle, right? He's not going to play end or, or whatever. So you have all these guys that can only play one position, Um and then Josh kind of, you know, basically Coach Kawik was like, hey, Josh, we're going to we're gonna put you at, at, at end this week. Josh was like, Roger that. And I remember the first or second play at end, Josh made a play only Josh could make, basically swam someone and then ripped the fullback because we played a 4-3 at that time. Um, so very pro-style defense. Um, and Josh is playing a 4-3 end, um, which Josh isn't built to play 4-3 end, um, you know. But he could do it based off his athleticism. And uh, Josh swam one dude, rip, uh, basically hard charge. One guy made the play. 
Um, and really, for me, that's when my friendship started. I was like, oh, I can be friends with this guy. He can play football. So uh, <laughs> we, can, we can start hanging out. And then just off the field, learning about Josh, being from Texas, um, you know, everything, you know, the positions he played in high school. Um, and, you know, Josh is, you know, he's, he's the quiet leader. You know, he's going to execute. Uh, he's going to do his job. He's going to hold you accountable just by, you know, looking at you and, you know, you know that you got to make that play. Um, and, you know, I was, I was in the same room with Josh for an entire year, you know, as they moved him to linebacker in spring ball our, um, our freshman year, you know, going into our sophomore year and, and stuff like that. So um, I got to see Josh play a lot on film um, and just look at some of the things, you know, Coach Lyles, uh, Robert Lyles used to, one of the funniest things, I ever heard uh, him talk about Josh, and it was either spring ball or or preseason. Was you know basically he called Josh the the minus 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 plus plus player, right? So Josh, your your foot your alignment's wrong here. You're supposed to be over here. Josh, your eyes are wrong here. You're supposed to be looking here. Josh, your steps are wrong here. And then Josh makes a tackle for loss for five yards back in the backfield, and Coach Lyles used to always call it the minus 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 plus plus play. Um, and only Josh could do because if my alignment, if my eyes are wrong, right, I'm not, I'm not making a tackle for loss. But Josh just had that ability to, to, to make those plays. And God, I mean, he's the all-time leading uh, sack, you know, tackle for loss guy for Army um, at that quick position. It was that yeah. I really do believe that quick position for Josh was, you know, kind of like taking all of his, um, kind of highlighting his his full abilities, even though. Um, there was probably some plays <laughs> Josh didn't like having to mingle with those fucking guys up front, but <laughs> yeah, it was tough. But uh, but yeah, yeah, a lot of good times, man. You you, you recapped it well. Uh, definitely yeah. that, so that, that linebacker time. Natural, Sal. I mean, when you know, I you know, I don't really, you know, kind of. You know, really, no, you know, there was never like one off the field moment where I was like, oh, me and Josh are going to be friends. You know, you know, it was just kind of like through film work, through West Point, through prep, you know, and then the couple times we hung out off the field, uh, me and Josh obviously never underage drank ever. That would obviously never be. So we never drank at prep school at all. Um, but if we did, uh, you know, we, you know, there was never any fighting or ego matching or, or anything like that. Um, so it became very natural, very natural relationship. Um, and to this day, you know, I, you know, I, I still text Josh, you know, I know he's got a big, big thing coming up in his life. Um, you know, keep trying to talk him out of it, but he's, he's set on it. Um, uh, <laughs> but you know, he's got a great girl. Um, and unfortunately this year has kind of pushed, um, some things for a lot of people, but, um, they're resilient and, and they'll make it happen when they can. And, uh, hopefully we can all be there for the celebration. Nice. If any, it, people are watching live, if you have any comments or questions for us, feel free to, um, send them our way. We'll answer them and, and, and bring them up as, as best we can. Um, Josh, you know, what game comes to my mind right away when I think of, uh, your kind of dominance on defense is the game at temple. Um, I think he had like four sacks in that game. And then at halftime, I'm in the press box at um, in, in the stadium at, at Lincoln Financial, and I'm seeing Al Golden, the Temple coach, talking to the referees about, you know, he, he's trying to work the referees on you because I think he had at least maybe, I could be wrong, two or three sacks in the first half. I mean, it was just a, a it was a display. It was a show. And I noticed, like, didn't I, I think they might have called you for jumping off sides a couple times in the second half where, you know, I think that Al Golden worked the refs enough to, like, watch ev your every, like, minute step. on and Because I, I was looking for the press. Uh, he didn't jump off. Oh, oh, there goes the flag. You know, you probably, maybe you could have had, like, six sacks in that game. Do you remember that game at all, or? Yeah, that was hilarious. Um, I think I think they started like you said. He, he must have, you know, had it in with that with with the refs, and he started kind of uh, penalizing me for maybe my helmet uh, or maybe like some like uh, turf that was hanging off of my helmet, like kind of uh, overshadowing like the, the line of scrimmage or something, but. It was uh, it was it was a messy, crazy game, and uh, it was definitely one to remember. You know, being in that stadium and against a 
you know, a tough comp opponent like that. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, you know, some, some of the sacks were more opportunities or plays in general, you know, more kind of just opportunities that uh, that opened up. And, you know, luckily um, they kind of uh, opened up in front of me and, and other ones I had to fight a little bit more for. But um, fun game, you know, muddy. Everybody was sliding all over the place. And, uh, and and yeah, it was just uh, – it, it just happened to kind of like pad my pad my stats also for the, uh, for the season. So that, that helped also. Do you have a favorite memory, like your playing days? Do you have a favorite memory? Is 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 it that game? Is it the scoop and score? Or, um, do you have Do you have one? Yeah, I would. Uh, I would have to take it back to like, uh, I think it was like my freshman year when um, I got like my first little bit of action, and uh, it was finally at um, defensive end. And uh, we had old Stan Brock uh, as a coach, and and he decided to just throw me in there for. Um, I guess he he and Mumford, you know, were kind of proponents. Obviously, Mumford had been seeing me work in practice, and um, and kind of uh, been, been trying to work me in. This was probably advocating for me in the in the in the meeting room, and um, <clears throat> finally, I was able to get into a game, and uh, you know, it was a big stage as far as I was concerned, first collegiate game. And um, I was playing defensive end and, um, you know, it was like a third and long, third and eight or so. And, um, you know, sure enough, I was able to get the better of that, that tackle with just your basic uh, kind of pull and pull and shoot uh, maneuver and kind of uh, grasp just like the edge of the jersey of the quarterback as I was like coming around the pocket and just held on for dear life and just tried to tug and tug and tug uh, until eventually – um, he kind of just, you know, came down and, um, I may have gotten like a, a half a sack credit or something like that, but for it being my first play, you know, I thought that was, uh, that was, that was pretty telling. It, it definitely was encouraging going forward, but, uh, kind of like my, my f biggest memory was like, you know, once I got up and kind of like recovered from all the hard slaps to the helmet, um, <laughs> I look up and see big old Stan Brock, like rushing the field. And uh, he's like all the way kind of, you know, past the, ha the hash marks and stuff, you know, where, where he wasn't supposed to be just to kind of like, you know, rush me and freaking lift me off the ground and uh, congratulate me and stuff. So uh, moments like that, you know, where it, it, it wasn't the most impactful play of the game, but um, they knew it meant a lot to me. And, you know, I think it meant a lot to them because they saw uh, my effort, you know, from the, the time I got there and, uh um, you know, and, and it's just a reflection of kind of like the brotherhood, the good atmosphere where kind of everybody's uh, everybody's kind of a stakeholder and everybody else's success. So um, I'd say that was one of the fonder ones. Who did you play in that game? Wake Forest. Okay. Big okay. detail. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Okay. I, I want to say it was definitely an ACC team. I remember, I remember that. Um, now, um, if we can move on to your to the NFL side of, of you know, I'm trying to remember. I think you might be the. You're definitely the last Army football player to um, start. You know, a game in the NFL. I can't think of another that started an NFL game on defense. To be honest with you, I know we have Ali playing for the Steelers, and um, you know, now you know an All Pro, basically almost perennial All Pro. He is. He's turned himself into, and um, you know, I just just. Go through the path there because you had to work for that opportunity for the NFL. It wasn't just honest. Obviously, it wasn't just handed to you, right? Yeah, I definitely did. Um, I wasn't even going to play uh, or pursue the next level, just given the the hoops and and all the stuff I knew I'd face trying to uh, you know maneuver that uh, that two year commitment. <clears throat> but um, and in fact, I was going to try to get stationed over in Europe. Um, just to kind of like, you know, see a change of scenery. But, um, and, and that's exactly why I kind of took up this uh, athletic intern position, but it just so happened that year, um, they wanted to kind of like even the, even the playing field and, and prevent kind of the athletic interns at West Point from kind of getting the upper hand uh, on the, on the uh, duty station selection. So, I winded up uh, with like my third choice or so, which is Fort Hood. And um, 
<clears throat> that was, you know, really good. I uh, got a chance to uh, take part in a, uh, in a kind of a transitioning unit, uh, 3rd Cavalry Regiment that had, uh, you know, converted um, from being a, a tank unit to uh, being a kind of mobilized striker unit. And um, it was super fun. I was able to kind of train, um, you know, kind of everybody started with a blank slate because we were getting these new weapons in. And uh, we also had to do like a whole lot of repetition just to get uh, fully mission capable as, as quick as possible. So I got a, you know, great amount of repetitions and um, made a lot of good relationships with, with the team there. And uh, throughout that time, um, I realized that, you know, I'm, I'm back stateside now. I'm not overseas and uh, I'm accessible to these scouts. Um, I'm in decent shape. Uh, you know, thankfully, like I was able to kind of essentially live in a weight room when I was athletic intern. So, uh, and, you know, when you're, when you're working with Coach Swanson and, and the rest of the guys, you, it's kind of a sin to fall out of shape and stuff. So, uh, that, you know, that was all well and good, but um, I knew that, uh, you know, I still had to kind of convert my body into like football mode if, if I was going to pursue that. And um, I basically did a little research, saw that there was a super regional combine coming up. And although I couldn't make the first one um, that was a qualifier, I was able to make the, uh, or I was, we're actually able to talk to the guy in charge um, who ended up being, you know, just, a, just a great asset to us. And um, he was able to like, tell me that I could forgo that first, um, that first uh, contest or, or combine and, and automatically qualify for the super regional, which, uh, which was good. That bought me a little extra time. Um, and it was good for me because I, I really didn't have the time to spare given that we we're doing so much training. So anyways, I uh, made it out there and made a good showing. Um, and you know was able to just garner a, a lot of attention from uh, scouts that uh, you know were just seeing me for the first time and, and then ones that um happened to, to know me from my playing days and uh i was i was kind of shocked at how short of a memory span like a lot of these scouts have you know a lot of them like didn't know or weren't familiar with my accomplishments uh, from the college days so I knew i couldn't rest on those laurels i had to kind of like um <clears throat> You know, put up during the uh, during the combine, but um, you know, fortunately enough, uh, uh, Indianapolis called oh, Ryan Grixon, the the GM up there, and uh, this guy was was actually the one that was saying that he had actually come to visit me while at West Point, and um, I mean, I don't know why I wouldn't have seen him across paths, but I I don't know. There was, I guess there was some some other stuff going on, but. Um, he, uh, you know, he, he was kind of dead set on, on kind of bringing me up to, to Indy, even to the point where he didn't make me uh, come up there for a, a workout or a physical. Um, and uh, he had like, you know, three other staff members call me on that same day just to kind of like secure the deal. And uh, it, it seemed unprecedented. I know like with the agent I was working with, he definitely hadn't seen anything like that. And he was like, you know, oh, go, 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 sign, sign, sign. Uh, I kind of succumbed, uh, just kind of gave in, but uh, that wound up being a, a, just a great uh, spot for me. Um, I, I truly think that, you know, it was a place where it was more of a, uh, you know, player friendly environment. They saw more than just a, an asset or a, uh, you know, a number and you know, a faceless body. It was, it was more about the, the player as a whole and the person. And, um, you know, it was just a great time that, uh, that unfolded for those next four years in Indy. You got to play against some pretty uh, decent quarterbacks in practice, right? When you were at <laughs> Indianapolis. <laughs> yeah, no doubt about it. It was it was a great time. Like, I mean, there was just talent just all over the field at, at any given time. So there was just no lack of uh, entertainment value um, when when you weren't, you know, just trying to. You know, play and kind of have fun yourself uh you know there's always some incredible plays being made out there from from everybody you know from the stars on the field and, and then even the practice squatters who were also kind of ta like phenoms in their own right and they were actually getting out there trying to make a name for themselves it's a good time
can't imagine what it's like uh, coming from West Point and then taking some time off and serving and then going like kind of right into an NFL career. I mean, that had to be, I mean, it, it takes a, a special talent to do that, no doubt, I would guess, right? I mean, it wasn't, I mean, you're just going right into it. It seemed like they didn't, you know, there was no like, and then, and then you're on the field going against the, these pro guys. And I mean, uh, was there times where it was just like, wow, was there an all or shock factor for you or was it just kind of roll with it? Yeah, I mean, to highlight that point, I didn't actually arrive into Indianapolis until uh, the the second week of camp. And it just so happened to be the first padded practice that they had. So uh, I, I had to, just to backtrack, um, once I signed the contract, despite the Army kind of having dealt with this with Colin Mooney and uh, maybe one other person before, uh, you know, I had to just like kind of trudge up that. Uh, bureaucratic machine and, and try to uh, get all those signatures and um, <laughs> basically nobody was familiar with this process whatsoever even though like you know th this is to my knowledge like a set in stone two year deal you, you do this you provide the contracts you, provide, you know provide the packet and you're on your way um, so even though I signed in uh, basically on my birthday April 10th of uh, 2013 I didn't actually uh, I free up from the army until uh, like July uh, 7th or something like that. And, you know, I was able to make it up to, to camp like um, two days after that or the next day. And, um, you know, that happened to be the day where um, I also had to knock out like my conditioning test and, um, you know, first and foremost, and then uh, kind of get, get suited, get fitted for everything and, and, and trot my butt out there as, as green as possible. I could be for uh, you know my first day of practice, and um, I mean, yeah, it, it was a it was incredible to kind of be united with uh, you know people that I always admired, and I think uh, you know one of the, the more welcoming, accommodating people was like Robert Mathis, and uh, he was just like super fascinated with the military, and was always uh, you know kind of sparking the conversation on. Uh, <laughs> just asking just funny questions about uh you know my my background and what i was doing and, and andrew luck was actually like uh very curious to kind of uh he sat next to me at lunch like that first day so um but this is a great environment um and uh yeah and no particular uh play or anything that that stood out to me but um you know i de definitely noticed like off the bat that the that the pace was was very fast. Everybody on this field could uh, could move and and was you know look like uh, you know Greek gods in in, in a way and uh, um, and and it was just a, a very uh, competitive uh, kind of high strung environment. But at the same time, also kind of uh, had a lot of a lot of support there to to uh, kind of foster your success. So that was good. Steve, I'm sure when Josh is playing, I mean you're you're trying to get. It to see as many Colts games on TV as possible, right? To watch, to watch your brother. I mean, talk about what that was like to, to see Josh represent um, the U S army, the army football brotherhood in, in the NFL. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's uh, you know, you, one of my, one of my best friends from all through the Academy is, uh, has reached the, reached the dream. Um, I think I'm sure at some point throughout Josh's life, he wanted to play in the NFL. Um, so it's, it's watching a, a man, you know, live the American dream, live out his, his dream. So let's just talk about, and Josh just kind of went over the timeline, but uh, <laughs> how special an athlete Josh is where he goes two years, no, no pads, doing army training, which is long distance, push ups, sit ups. You know, you get to hit the weight room a little bit, um, but you're not really working on your explosive muscle groups. Um, not really doing agilities for PT every day. Um, you know, waits four months from his, when he's signed, he's signed, he's ready to go. He's like, Oh, boom, baby, April 10th. Happy birthday to me. I'm out of this army. I'm good. Uh, you know, four months later, you know, April to May, May to June. So three months later, then first day he's there, he's got to put up the pads and play against some of the best, well, the best athletes, um, to play football. And he's able to continue to impress people and, and make a contract to make a name for himself. So, uh, yeah, of course, red zone package, baby, too easy. 
Um, you know, I'm, I got the, the Ravens game on and I got my, my Colts game on. I got to watch Josh. I think one of um, – I think he got a – one of the nods was against uh, the Philadelphia Eagles, Josh. I think you guys started against the Eagles. Uh, I don't know if that was your first one or, or one of them, but I remember, you know, I, I you know, always kind of get the pregame on the Colts while Josh played to see, you know, if, if uh, I forget, what was his name, Freeman? Was there a linebacker? Yeah. For Freeman? Yeah. Um, and I saw he got a scratch, so I knew automatically if Freeman wasn't going to bleed, uh, going to get the, the, the nod, then Josh is going to get a play. And I think Josh had a one on one with Darren Sproles that game. Um, I think Josh had, uh, you know, and, uh, I think um, Josh had uh, either – he had a really nice tackle for loss that game or, or a sack. I forget what it was. Uh, but, yeah, man, I, you know, it kind of goes to the, you know, the old thing is, you know, you love seeing your brother succeed. Um, and, you know, it was just – you know, it was awesome. Uh, gave me the, the confidence and the, the, the get after it to kind of – lace back up on the cleats and try out for myself, um, him and Ali both, um, you know, I went through with Ali, Ali obviously, you know, got selected and stuff. And I remember whether it was true or not at the time, I remember asking Josh, you know, what it's like being in a locker room. And he's like, you know, kind of plays it off. Like, yeah, I mean, these, their guys, nothing special, man. It's just like, you know, just like being in a college locker room. And I'm like, all right, cool. You know, I don't know if that was, you know, like just trying to, keep me motivated to get after it. Um, but yeah, watching, watching, you know, I watch Ali, um, every chance I get, um, you know, I watch Josh every chance I got. Um, you know, I know, you know, my, my wife loved watching Josh play. She, you know, she got to meet Josh, um, an old place called ocean city, Maryland that Josh got to go to. Um, that we went on uh, a little vacation there to, uh, you know, one of the one of the times we were let out of the cage at the academy, um, and uh, she always, you know, um, loved seeing Josh on the on the TV, and uh, you know, even when my son was really young, I got to show him, you know, Uncle Josh um, on the TV. So it's good, man. It's it's just um, it's just one of those things that you know we don't have a lot of guys we played ball with do that so it's really cool to see and um you know i know josh is you know he's he's dominated this the the post-career life um you know going back to school and now up in new york so um you know josh is going to be successful no matter what he does uh it, you know he continues to get that you know he was he was an underdog his whole life sal you know he's you know walk on to west point are you kidding me you know fighting to get into the nfl um, so anybody that has that kind of, that, that work hard effort first, um, the talent's going to come. So whatever, whatever it is, it's, he's going to get after it. So I, I look forward to seeing him, uh, next year, hopefully, um, and catching up. Um, definitely, so. definitely, definitely, Steve. Let me, let me cut you off, man. You, you're making <laughs> me feel too good over here. Uh, oh uh, yeah. And, and yeah, like I, I definitely, uh encourage Steve to, to take a shot because, um, you know, I wasn't overstating anything or, or underselling anything by, uh, you know, talking about like, you know, his abilities compared to like, you know, what I was able to see in the, in the league. It was, you know, he was, he was a special player and, uh, you know, somebody that had to kind of overcome, you know, his injuries and, and, um, you know, maybe, I don't know, on paper, like, you know, all, all the, the specs didn't, kind of uh, work in his favor as far as like what a, what a scout and archetypal player now, see, uh, scout would look out paper, for. My paper always had me at six foot, Josh. I don't know. <laughs> Everybody else's paper didn't, but, but you know, when I had, when, when I was being recruited out of high school, I was six foot. I don't know what happened from there. <laughs> yeah. You're, uh, you you made some friends in the right places, I guess. Yeah. And apparently I was six one also, which, which probably got me uh, a little more attention than I deserve. But uh, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's great. To, it's great to see everybody, uh, you know, kind of uh, flourishing and in, in their own right. And I guess you know things kind of happen out. Like I mean, I, I wouldn't have ever planned that to, to happen. And um, you know, I mean, uh, like I mean, even even Ali's situation. Like I, I'm sure he he could have never really like foresaw that coming out. It was 
you know, that was something that's uh, like frivolous. It's like him calling me one night and just kind of like asking about it, just kind of like poking around, you know, like, oh, what's it like up there, man? I, I don't really know, man. Like, is it, is it even worth it? And, uh, you know, and I'm like, of course it is. It's kind of like the, the, the greatest jobs you can ever ask for. But um, it was it was just like super satisfying to see him kind of finally get his uh, like just do. And uh, for him being as, as great as he is, you know, versatile. Uh, I, I always knew like the offensive tackle position was like kind of he was just kind of dominant in that because he was the one that would give me the hardest time out of anybody um, when I was kind of playing scout team where we do one on one. So um that that was that was really fulfilling to see and I, and I like to kind of uh you know continue to support him and hopefully he plays until he's 40. I think the craziest position change I've ever seen in army football in my coverage days was him moving to wide receiver right in his senior year and him being wide receiver on the team you know he was the best I mean he was called 35 passes that year I mean I don't know if have seen that in a, in a while the uh I think the the best series I've ever watched Army football do is first and goal on the one at Iowa State. We're getting our butts beat. Um and coach is just like, screw it, dude. Hey, Faye Dali, first and goal on the uh you know on the one. Oh, incomplete pass. I don't care. Run it again. Second and goal on the one. Faye Dali. Nope. Didn't make it again. Third and goal on the one. Throw it again. Nope. Didn't get it. Okay. Do it again. Like just we're going to throw it to Ali because he's 6'10 with a 20-inch vert against the 5'10 DB. Like, we're going to do that four times in a row. Caught it on the fourth play, got a touchdown. I'm, like, dying on the sidelines. Um, and, uh, you know, Ali's obviously, uh, you know, he's a freak of nature. The, the guy actually served almost five years. He was away from the game, um, you know, for a long time. Um, and that guy's, you know. Him and Josh are two of the best athletes I've ever got to play with. Uh, watching them box in accelerated boxing was one of the, you know, definitely, you know, if you thought, um, what was his name? Was John Paul and uh, Nate Robinson were a good fight. Um, uh, that was, that was, uh, oh, I see, I see uh, Colonel Tillman with the note. Um, very good. Yeah. Appreciate it, sir. Um, you know, Colonel Tillman continues to always uh, give me some advice throughout my career. Uh, one of the best guys at CEP for us. Um, so I'm um, good hearing from him. Glad to see he's on here. Um, but yeah, no, um, getting back to, you know, topic at hand, Ali, Josh, you know, Ali, me and Ali were stationed at Fort Stewart. He was at Hunter in the regiment and he was doing the same thing, Josh. See, I don't know, man. I, don't, I just don't know if, you know, I'm good enough. I don't know if it's, if it's worth it. You know, and I'm like, Ali, get out of here. All right. Like, you'll be fine. And, um, you know, it was really cool to um, see him do that. So, um, but yeah, we'll, we'll get to watch him here uh, against the Browns this week. So, um, I hope they take out the Browns just because, as a Ravens fan, it's hilarious to watch the Browns continue to suffer. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, like, when you look at it, Ali, Josh, and even Colin Mooney, uh, and even uh, Caleb Campbell, even though it didn't kind of work out the way might have wanted with Caleb. Those guys paved the way for you know the, there's you know there's some new blood now NFL blood with Cole Christensen, you know Elijah Riley. There, there's some new blood there that you're you're seeing, and now maybe who there's talk about a couple players on this team, uh, this 2020 team getting an NFL look. And now yes, they've changed the rules a little bit, and now it's a little easier to get that done. But still, just to have a, I mean I. Brett Toth is another guy. I remember like 10 or more scouts. I was at his uh, kind of, um, what do you call it? When he had scouts there, why am I getting this wrong? Um, it was his pro day. It was his pro day, pro right? Day. And, uh, there was like more than 10 scouts there watching him lift weights and run and stuff. I mean, I was like multiple teams too from all over the place. I'm like, this is something that is different because I don't think back then you guys definitely didn't have that, right? Where you, did you have guys coming to to practices and games a lot to to see you guys play or talk to or no? Uh, it was very rare. I think Colin, like after, uh, you know, Colin was the all time lead single season rushing leader when he uh, when he graduated. Um, and I think he got a pro day. I didn't see Caleb. I don't know if Caleb got one. Maybe Josh remembers, but by the time 
you got to remember it during that time too. And I think it changed Colin's senior year where it went back to two years. Yeah. Um, because when we were recruited, it was, you could go straight out. Bobby Ross did his magic uh, for the Academy. Um, and you go straight out. Then it went back to two years and now it's back to straight out. Um, and that'll always be, you know, whoever, who's ever in the seat, Sal will, will make that decision based off of whatever's going off, going on in the world. Um, yeah. But the bottom line is, is one of the most important things um, in the army is recruiting leaders of character. It's one of the, it's literally the number one, one of the number one things that the army has to do every single year is recruit 18 and 19 year olds of character, get people to West Point and ROTC programs that aren't just great leaders, but great leaders of character. Um, and it's just another way, uh, it's another way of recruiting. Um, to have great leaders of character, um, go to the academy, and then get to the NFL. Now, we're talking less than 1% of Army football players are actually going to go that path. Um, but the ones that do help the athletes in high school say, hey, there's a chance. I believe in it. I also enjoy the, the military routine lifestyle. So um, it's a bigger thing than just – people going to, you know, the NFL and, you know, they should serve and stuff like that. So you got to yeah, look at the strategic operations um, at the, at the, at the army level. Um, and look, I don't know them. I'm not at that point. I'm still at the tactical level. Um, so uh, I just common sense would tell me that if someone thinks it's a good strategic move for the army, that's when it's straight through. And yeah. when the leaders don't think it's a strategic move for the army, that's where the commitment comes back into play. So um, it's, uh, but yeah, we got that young blood in there. I think it's, re- it's helping us for recruiting as well. Um, Cole Christensen was an awesome, awesome football player. I love watching him play. I love watching Radican play. Um, and these guys coming out tomorrow. Um, I know they're, I know they're, they're excited. Um, and, you know, just talking to some of my buddies that are, at the academy, um, the team's ready. They're they're ready to go. It's going to be a great game. The the weather's going to be in our favor, hopefully. Um, and just uh, I think they got us at at plus seven um, over yeah. under at forty two. Um, so uh, I'm taking those odds um, and and looking forward to to seeing a great a great game. You got the under in that game? Uh, no, no. I'm going. I'm going over. You going over? Yeah, I, I thought so. Too. I, I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be a shootout. With, wow. Um, with I don't think West Virginia is going to be prepared for the triple option. They don't play anybody that's got the triple option. They've had less than a week to prepare for it. Um, their scout team can't just run triple option the way we can. They can watch all the film they want. Uh, we'll score or early like we do with most teams, and then West Virginia will probably figure it out a little bit. But we got to get to the perimeter. Watching the Air Force. Army game was just like dive, QB follow, dive, QB follow. We barely hit the perimeter. We're going to hit the perimeter with our speed um, against West Virginia, have them cover up, you know, some play action. Um, we're going to, I mean, it's these seniors' last game. Throw the book at them. Let's get, let's get to the perimeter, run some play action, open up the playbook. Um, and, and I, you know, you know, not, I don't want to be blasphemous here, but in Munkin we trust. All right, uh, he's done great things for the program, so uh, I think you know he plays the long game just as much as he plays week to week. So I, I'm excited for sure. I'm very blessed that my whole family can attend the game, uh, and my boys can experience it. I my boys were running around all last week, Sal. Running around during the game, I'm like in my man layer trying to watch the game. They're coming in here wrestling with me. I'm like throwing them off. We wrestle a little bit. And uh, that last a minute, uh, minute and 12, I think it was, the boys were downstairs and I called them up. We sat down on the, on the sofa and we got, to, I got to watch the last minute and 12 with my boys and watch us punch it in against the Air Force. Um, just an awesome thing to experience with my boys. You know, not, you know, I hate to admit this, but I taught them the rocket. They did the rocket. They were all excited. Um, and, uh, you know, just a cool thing. And tomorrow we get to watch it live with them. So very excited. Um, and I, I can't wait to hopefully see some, some good open, um, opening up the, 
playbook and then watching our defense match up against their offensive players. Yeah, um, you're talking West Virginia has a couple guys on the defensive side who are all Americans. You know, take that for what they – one of their um, – I think it's their nose tackle. He's a first team All American. They have a corner who's like a th- or defensive back who's a third team All American. Josh, how are you um how are you looking at this matchup for uh for tomorrow? What 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 do you see in Army's defense going up against a team like West Virginia? Well, um, looks like they're gonna have to match up against like uh, <clears throat> the throwing attack, which uh, you know, will, will kind of deserve some some emphasis. Uh, in preparation this week. And, um, I mean, uh, yeah, it's like, I guess, getting pressure on the quarterback uh, would definitely uh, kind of assist and and hopefully kind of getting him off of his mark. Um, And in my knowledge, he he doesn't throw a lot of picks. So, uh, you know, that I guess, you know, if they can just kind of rattle him up and and, kind of be – defensive and, and contesting uh, any balls in the air, uh, that'll, that'll give us a shot. But um, definitely, you know, just also trying to keep a lid on any blown assignments. Um, I think, you know, we definitely can't afford that. Uh, it's it's a tough matchup. You know, they're conventionally, traditionally a solid program. And, um, you know, I have no doubt that they're going to come to play this year. And, you um, you know, uh, I, I'm grateful that that Army was able to get this get this platform and and uh, kind of showcase their uh, their ability one last time and give the seniors a um, one final kind of shot at uh, at the glory. Um, so got, I mean, with that said, many, I know that they're gonna. How many huh? games they play this? Year? They play seven or eight games this year. I think they're five and four. So I think they I think they played nine games. Yeah, I think they played nine games. They okay. probably came back a little earlier. Yeah. So I think they're five and four. You know, I think they're I think their running back's averaging hundred yards a game. I think he's at like yeah. I, I can't remember. I think I, I believe I saw him averaging one oh five. It maybe something they attack with the rain. Um, but like Josh uh, they're gonna they're gonna air it out, they're gonna spread us out, they're gonna say our athletes are better than your athletes, um, like most big time schools do. Um, and our guys are going to have to make some plays early to deter their, you know, what, uh, what coach Lyles always say, discourage their courage. Right. Oh, yeah. Um, and, um, by punching them in the mouth and the guys are going to, they're, they're going to come out, they'll come out swinging. And if we make some big plays, you know, not like, you know, pick sixes or fumble recoveries or anything, like that, but if we just make batted balls or tight coverage where the quarterback can get pressures on him. To where they're not, they're going to show up thinking they're going to, you know, one, one, you know, they probably don't believe that we should be in this bowl, that we got it because of who we are um, and not necessarily what we've done. Um, and that's just, that's me with the, the natural chip on my shoulder, how I think people view West Point football. Um, but I think a little bit, there's some truth there. Um, you know, two, uh, I think that they're just going to come out and, and think they can run their offense. Um, and not really game plan against, um, you know, Army's defense, and they can just run their offense. And um, I think that's going to be a, a mistake. Um, I don't know anything about what their players have, you know, if they're, they've lost any key players or anything like that uh, due to, you know, injury or illness or opting out. Um, it it kind of surprises me that they're all Americans haven't opted out, seeing that the kind of the – the uh, you know it looks like this off season. I mean, Florida just had their starting receivers all opt out. Um, it it kind of seems like the thing to do that if unless you're Alabama, Notre Dame, um, Clemson, or Ohio State, a lot of guys are opting out because of one they don't want to get COVID or w- whatever the reason may be uh, with the shortened schedule. So um, it'll be interesting um, to say the least. But I- I'm definitely excited. Um, come out, make some plays quiet you know it's only gonna be about thirteen thousand people there so not a lot of noise so um you know we'll, we'll see i'll uh, again I'll, I'll uh i'll give you a little pre-game show of what it, what the stadium yeah. looks like everything i'll put my phone in a in a plastic bag and we'll be good there we go yeah i think real quick i think some people look at the quarterback stats and see a limited you don't have to really pick off a pass here you just got to get off the 
field if you're the defense, right? Just get off the field. Who uh, interceptions are great, but just get off the field. So, yeah, win the turnover battle, man. You know, don't turn the ball over. We hold on to the ball, and you know, which means for Army, you know, if we get a turnover or two, we should win the turnover battle because we're more disciplined and we just execute better than other teams. Um, so. We'll, we'll see. Uh, it's going to be a slippery game. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, I think we are very excited. And uh, a lot of our guys do not want to waste this this second kind of, yes, we earned a bowl. We didn't earn this bowl. So a lot of, a lot of seniors are going without it. Um, and uh, these seniors don't want to waste um, this second. <clears throat> Yeah, no doubt. Um, we're just um, we're gonna wrap it up here. Maybe, hey Josh, maybe the Army defense comes up with a play like you did it early in the 2010 Armed Forces Bowl, right? Just be in the right place, do your job, and uh, I think things fall into place. No doubt, no doubt. Josh, we appreciate you hopping on here. Great telling your story about you know your time at West Point, your time in the NFL. What are you doing? What are you up to now? What are you doing? What, what are you doing now with your life? What? Where are you at now? I'm uh. I'm just a, a process monkey right now, just in, in the finance world, trying to uh, trying to keep the lights on in here. So, uh, just, yeah, just working in finance in, in New York City. Uh, it's me and my fiance are up here working, and um, she's also going to school. So, uh, yeah, just you know, who, who knows where where to next? But for now, I'm very content and um, kind of eager to uh, take on this world, just like I, you know, took on the my past a uh, few other careers so nice nice well yeah. said uh just guys if you're if you're watching now hit us up on uh we're on all the um podcast platforms from spotify to um uh we're on spotify we're on apple we're on good uh, we're on, we're on heart radio you can catch us on um youtube there it is you can hear it is on your screen all our uh, social media platforms and we're gonna uh be be back tomorrow before the game with a little pregame show. Steve will be here. Uh, Steve will give us a, you know, Steve will be here from the stadium, giving us a little look at the stadium. We're just trying to get another um, possible potential former Army p football player to join us uh, for the pregame. It's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, you know, this is a, this is a day that maybe we didn't think we were going to get maybe in the summer, right? We didn't even know we were going to the season. Now we got a bowl game to watch tomorrow. And it's a, here's the thing, guys. It's the last game of the 2020 college football season because the Texas Bowl was postponed. So this is the last football game of 2020. And I think it's pretty appropriate to have Army play in this game. So playing the last game of the college football year. So almost similar to Army Navy, right? Sal, when I go live, you know, if I'm if I'm around other guys, I'm, I'm going to be turning the camera. We're going to show you all the support that we can. But at the end of the day, go Army, be West Virginia. Thanks a lot for joining us, Josh. Appreciate it. All right. Yeah, appreciate being here. Good seeing you guys. Thank you for listening to the Black Knight Nation podcast with your host, Sal Interdonato. For more information on your Army Black Knights, visit blackknightnation.com.